This is my Iron Man help. This is my Iron Man help. This is my Iron Man help. Good thing it's self healing. I'm gonna show you exactly how I built this and how it actually self heals on my ongoing quest to bring Iron Man's suit to reality. His suit does a lot besides shooting stuff and flying which I've already done. It also self heals and literally shape shifts when he started adding in that nanotech. To mimic that in the real world, I started with this self healing polymer. When I cut it, I can actually press it back together again and it becomes one single piece. It's just a really cool polymer that's pretty easy to work with. Cause unlike clay or gum or anything else that you might think is self healing, it's not sticky. Like you'd expect clay and gum to be self healing cause they stick to everything. This stuff only sticks to itself. So it could work for a suit. The downside though, it's not automatic like the Iron Man suit. You do have to push and hold it back together. I want it to just work on its own. So this is a 4D print. They call it 4D because of the added ability to shape shift. Supposedly you can use this printer filament like a regular 3D print, but if it gets bent out of shape, it actually remembers its shape and returns back to normal. At least that's what I've heard. I, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. First I'm gonna start by just printing the faceplate, which I did on my sweet Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer. And now I'm gonna bend it all out of whack. Let's dunk it in some warm water and see if it works. All right, it kind of works, but it is a little slow. And while it does eventually go back to its original shape, there's a problem. I don't really care how well the armor self heals if I'm already dead. Also, when this stuff snaps completely like this, it doesn't press back together like the other material. Like if I could mix the self repairing part of the other material with the shape shifting of this and add in more strength, like that'd be the most ideal. So I'm gonna try using this. It's a special type of metal called gallium that has a super low melting point. I've actually wanted to make a nanotech suit out of this stuff for years, but cannot for the life of me figure out how. I mean, it's like straight out of Terminator. Like just imagine this slowly covering your arm, flows out, expands all over, get that full metal suit. Unfortunately, it's not magnetic and I have no idea how to control it, but self healing on the other hand, I think I could do. Get it? Because it's on the other hand. <sighs> fucking dumb. To make it though, I actually copied how humans heal. Design is very human. Your veins carry blood all throughout the body and when you get a cut, blood leaks out and clots the injured area. So that's what I've built. It's basically a network of veins that circulates the hot gallium through the armor. Metal veins. That's metal? That's metal, baby. Look at this. Oh God. This doesn't look safe. Yeah, it might not be. It's hot. Oh, it's hot. It's, nope. hot. it's like metal blood. I really want to drink it. No, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, and let's go. Oh my God. Oh, it's working. Oh, that works so well. Oh God, it's going everywhere. <laughs> that works so well. Just shot through that tube. Whoa. That's super promising. I can probably make this way thinner and way more blood vessels now. The rest of the armor is also made of gallium. So wherever the armor gets sliced or damaged, the hot gallium blood leaks out, cools, and then hardens to fill the cut. Mini electric coolers can also be implanted to help keep the outside gallium cold and solid. And mini electric heaters help keep the liquid gallium hot and flowing. I'm gonna see if this works. <laughs> God, it's bleeding everywhere. I don't know if that was a success. Technically it healed the cut. We also spilled a lot of blood. I don't know, maybe with a bit more refinement this could work, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. Even though gallium's metal, it's really not that strong. And if you go anywhere slightly warm, you melt like a silver snowman. So that leaves me with this. Night and all. If you've seen some of my other videos, then you might recognize this metal with a very special property. It actually remembers its shape, kind of like the 4D printer filament. So when it gets heated to its activation temperature, it goes back to its program shape. But unlike the printer filament, Night and all works immediately. Also unlike the printer filament, polymer, and gallium, it's super strong. It's actually a nickel titanium alloy, kind of like Iron Man's actual suit. The suit's a gold titanium alloy. It's super strong, lightweight, plus it's crazy self-healing ability. It's like the perfect material for a high-tech Iron Man suit. But there's a reason why I don't want to do this. Like I've had this idea for a while now and I'm dreading starting it. Lazy. Here's why. It's not because I'm lazy. Should not have filmed in front of a live studio audience. Here's why. Night and all is super strong, which is great for armor, but that means it's very hard to work with. It'll break all your tools, pull blade, snap all your bits, 
and take forever to work. Remember, it's also temperature sensitive, which is great for self-healing, but it makes it impossible to weld. It just gets super brittle and it'll snap if you put any force on it. At the same time, it's cracking and it's just, it's just, oh, it's just a nightmare. Combined all that with my non-existent metalworking experience and lack of tools. Oh, and the toughest part isn't even the material, it's the price. For two square feet of this stuff, it's a thousand dollars. So really don't want to mess this up. Yeah, let's get this started. First gonna start with a simple arm piece. Just a metal tube, how hard could it be? Wow, I made no progress. This is gonna be hard. Huh? What? Okay, I don't think I'm sending the message that I thought. Run eternity later. Wow, okay, clearly I need better tools, but eventually I gotta cut out. But right now, if I heat it, it'll just flatten out, because that's what it's programmed to do. So we gotta now program in that new curve shape, and the way we do that is by heating it up past its activation temperature to around a thousand degrees. At this temperature, the nitinol crystal structure sets and remembers this new shape. The trick though is while you're heating it up to that thousand degrees to set the new shape, the nitinol is constantly fighting to shift back to its old shape. So you gotta keep it locked in place somehow while you heat it. <laughs> Not as easy as I thought. Like nitinol's very strong. Just look at what a thin wire can do. We gotta do a whole sheet. Plus, if you put it in a metal vise or something, it's super hard to heat up because a metal vise will just suck all the heat away. So my new plan is to carve molds out of these fire bricks, then to hold the nitinol in place. I'm gonna bend a piece of steel around the outside, then wrap the whole thing in more steel wire to really secure the part. Then to heat it up to that thousand degrees, I went and bought my own kiln that hopefully gets hot enough to program the parts. I'm informing the viewers, I'm about to start the first test fire. So hopefully this doesn't actually catch on fire. To make sure it doesn't, I'm monitoring its current draw and got a live remote view all right to my phone using AnyDesk, a super fast remote desktop app. Basically, it lets you control your computer from anywhere, which is gonna come in handy in this project. Also, they sponsored us and paid for all this night and all, so big shout out. It's got super fast encryption speed, so I'll know instantly if anything catches on fire. Probably. You can also directly transfer files, and it lets you do intense computer tasks on any device. Like, I've even got this video's edit right here on my phone. We even got audio too. We even got audio too. Check out my sweet editing setup. Deep frying this one. But actually though, all the work can be stored on your big desktop, but you can work remotely off your portable devices. You could also 3D print remotely, mix collaborating on projects super easy, and they even let Styro Pyro blow up 100 car batteries remotely. Clearly a super cool product and company, so go check them out, link below. And it didn't explode, so that's good. I wonder if it worked. I read one source on the internet that said you're supposed to rapidly cool it. Here it goes. Oh God. The reason we're in a very sketchy area is because our workshop does not have 220 volts. And yes, the people probably know we're in here, but just be quiet to be sure. We can unwrap this, see if it uh, goes back to this shape. That would be a miracle if it does. Oh, it's blue. That's it. All right, moment of truth. Did we successfully program in the new curve shape? This is huge. I wanna get my hopes up, but we might actually be able to pull this off. Also, titanium changes color with heat. It turns yellow, purple, then blue, right around the programming temp. Besides looking insane, it also lets us know if we reached our correct activation temperature. So I cut and fired the other side of the arm and added a buckle and hinge to attach them together. Put it on your arm. First piece. Now, say it gets a little damaged. Oh God. And now, you thought you could break it? Whoa. Whoa, that worked. That's crazy. Oh, oh, I hear it cracking. Nope, we're good. Ta-da. As good as new. It's just so wild to watch the armor magically return to normal. And I'm giving it away. So if you want to win this self-healing arm piece, just like this video and comment a project I should make next. Also, if you see any cool comments down there, give them a thumbs up so I know it's popular. Unfortunately for me, I think the helmet's gonna be the coolest part to make and just absolutely beat up on, you know, maybe even shoot it in the face and just have it morph back into shape all on its own. That is some Iron Man shit.
but I got my work cut out for me because I think the helmet's gonna be 10 times harder than this arm. It's got like a million different cuts and bends that are just gonna be a nightmare to do. I legit don't see how this is possible without like hundreds of thousands in metal working equipment, which uh, I do not have. So I looked up and made some calls to just about every nitinol manufacturing company I could find. Most of these companies make nitinol medical equipment, such as mini tubes to keep your blood vessels open, or braces for your teeth, or stuff like that. So when I asked them to make me a giant Iron Man helmet, they didn't really know what to do. The one company I even got a quote from was over a hundred grand to try and make the mask. I think they were just gonna try and machine it out of a giant block of night and all, which was just so expensive and wasteful. I guess we gotta do this on our own. I figured if I was actually gonna try and do this, the best place to start was by making a cardboard version. So I found a template of a flattened Iron Man helmet, a bunch of cutting and gluing and more cutting later. I ended up with my cardboard Iron Man helmet. Ow. It's a little tight. It's a little tight. There's so many tiny little cuts you have to make. Feeling pretty screwed right now. <laughs> I already messed up a lot of this. At this point, I have no idea how I'm gonna get each of these parts to fit together or even connect each piece for that matter. Because again, you can't weld it. But I do know if I have to hand cut each one of these little pieces, I'm gonna lose my mind. Luckily, a couple years ago, I got a plasma cutter that might be able to help us. <laughs> it's, it's been sitting in my shed for the majority of that time and it's seen better days, but you know, I'm still hopeful. I think this is a rhinoceros. Yeah, almost like that. That's for a fact, it's a neglected plasma cutter. This is the answer to all of our problems. Oh. Oh. Easy work. First test piece. Haven't used this thing in years. I think it'll work, right? All right, we got in there. Let's try it again. All right, one more try. Thankfully, with a bit of love, it seems to be working. Okay, it worked. Hmm. Now we got like 50 more pieces to cut. <laughs> so I programmed in all the shapes we need to cut, making sure to pack them as close together as possible on the night and all sheet, you know, so we don't waste anything. And now we're cooking with gas. Finally, I got all the pieces cut out, but we still have a lot of slag around the edges. So a bunch of sanding and grinding later, got them all cleaned up and started to loosely fit the parts together to see where we're at. Once I had it taped mostly together, now we gotta figure out how to program and connect everything for real. After thinking about it, I'm pretty sure the best way to do this is with screws and taps. This should let us be more flexible with the angles because some of these are over 90 degrees sharp, which is impossible to bend. But a smaller tab that bridges the gap would be much easier and give the illusion of sharp corners if the tabs are hidden on the inside. Now connecting each piece means I gotta drill a couple holes. But don't worry, titanium's super easy. Broke another bit. This one welded itself. And then it welded itself. Yeah. Another drill that broke. It shouldn't really cause any problems whatsoever. Now that we have all the basic bends and shapes of the part, now I'm gonna make molds for each part with the correct curves and fire each piece separately. Hopefully then with all the parts and tabs individually programmed, they'll all fit back together in the right place. Then when we damage the helmet, they'll all work together to pull the helmet back to its correct form. Get in there, chop off a good amount of hair. That's pretty good. Face plate all wrapped up. Fire in the hole. Ooh. Uh, Iron Man Oh, it slipped. Looking good, hopefully that'll work. Wow. Very nice. 600 billion more to go. Okay, I got the next one right here. Oh. Now it's the next one in. Fire in the hole. Try and make this look like cool in some possible way. Another one down. Finally, it's taking shape. That's one in the hole. And I got all the pieces programmed and put together. And now we're left with this extremely badass looking titanium Iron Man helmet. Now I was gonna paint it, but I really like the look already. All the different colors of the titanium is wild. And the camo faceplate, not planned at all, but I'm not mad. <laughs> Zombie Iron Man. It's pretty well too. But there's still one big hurdle we gotta overcome. I'm gonna try putting the whole thing back in the kiln and firing it one more time. Hopefully now, because I've programmed in each piece to have roughly the right shape, 
When I fire it again with the whole thing together, all of it will reach that activation temperature and set as one. And all those tiny little errors and shape differences that I'm sure I did will all be ironed out because each piece will be programmed in relation to everything. Hopefully. Or it could all rip itself apart <laughs> so bad that we have to start all over again. But hey, you know, sometimes you gotta risk it, so let's throw this in one last time. Hopefully it keeps the color too. I really like this. Whoa. It's green now. Yes. I think it looks pretty sweet to be honest. Kind of like a combo of the first Iron Man suit we ever made. Updated obviously with the nanotech. It's got like this cool green camo look to it. Now we gotta figure out if it can actually do what it's supposed to do. Sounds like there's only one thing left to do. It works. <laughs> that was painful. <laughs> I know, it doesn't look the best. All right, let's see what we can do. Woo! Yeah, that's pretty sick. And we're back. Considering you smashed. Considering I flattened it. All it takes is a bit of heat to bring it back to normal. You can also run current through the helmet to heat up the metal and make it heal on its own. Oh, Just like the smaller Nightingale Springs. That looks so sick. Yeah, man. It'd be a shame if something happened to it, huh? It would be a humongous shame if something humongous were to happen. Shame. I'm just gonna take a couple, couple cracks out of yeah. it. Oh god! Yeah, I don't think it's gonna fit, huh? That doesn't even look like the same mask anymore. Yeah, that's a bummer, huh? Well, guess I gotta make another one. Good as new, baby. But can it handle a superhero landing? Yikes, that's so far. That's a lot. All right, we need that person not to be there. God, I'm getting vertigo. <laughs> Yo, dude, this is so high. All right, I'm ready when you are. Three, two, one, dropping. Dropping. Let's go see what happens. Let's go see what happens. <laughs> Is where the impact was. I honestly do think it'll buff out. <laughs> you think so? I think it will. How? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I think you have high hopes. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty bad. Watch this. That's pretty solid. See? It is new. Oh. All right. Dude. It sparks. That's wild. 100, 200 feet, something like that. Show how devastating it is. I'm gonna jump. <laughs> Next test. What's the point of armor if it can't stop a bullet? So we took it out to a large remote area to safely test just that. What are you holding? Why are you holding this? No like good way to do this. <laughs> I don't know how to deep breath. <laughs> I know very well. I've been hyping this up. I like kinda need to impress, dude. We got William Osmond. I know. Tom Scott and a backyard scientist. I think there's a chance it works. Oh, yeah. Stop at 22. <laughs> no. No. I wouldn't hold yeah. it in front of me, but I'm pretty sure, like a nine millimeter. I have no idea. I've never done anything like this because they're not stupid. Jake came in and We're said, visionaries. I like to go back to how the helicopter was invented. They were stupid. You get to eject out of the seat, up into the rotor, and then like fly off. Probably would have survived if she was in my helmet. Uh, you know what you stop now? 50. 22 long rifle. See if it stops it. Dude, that bounced right Let's off. go. Nothing. Wow. No dent, no I nothing? Nothing. That was just a kiss. I bet that would uh, iron out with the blowtorch. Too. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Glock 9 mil. We'll see if it stops it. I'd say 50-50, honestly. Okay. Oh, okay. That felt powerful. All right, it cracked it. It did crack, <laughs> but 
Nothing on the inside. Ooh, Ooh, a little crack on the inside. That was the same spot. I yeah. think in the same spot. What? what? Wow. He's still alive. It's insane. This is not only bat proof, drop proof, foot proof, but now bulletproof. I'm already extremely happy with this, but just for fun, let's see how far we can push it. 1911, 45 cal. All right. Ready? Start. Ah, uh, that's through. Oh. Wait. I shot, I keep shooting him in the same spot. To give this armor one more fighting chance, I gotta hit it in a different spot. Clearly, I need something more accurate. This thing is insane. Really? 223 with the scope. All right, buddy. I missed? Pretty sure I missed. <laughs> I hit it. Yep. Oh, I shot, probably shot through his head. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> Look at the back of his head. <laughs> oh. Ah, yeah, I see the exit hole here. I didn't even hit the armor. I threaded the armor. Really good shot, Jing. I wish I meant to do any of this. Okay. You carved that piece. Look at how you carved it. Did he survive? <laughs> Pretty well for himself. Oh, oh easy, dude. Right? <laughs> the helmet worked. Sometimes. We stopped some. We dude. just didn't stop them all. The final test, though, an 18 wheeler. Excuse me. Do you think it'd be possible for you to drive over this? What, my, my rear tire? Sure. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. Oh. Wow. Oh, so flat. Oh, What's your confidence God. level, Angie? Oh, Low instant. <laughs> we'll get the, get the torque, huh? Get Probably. The torque. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh. No way, dude. Oh. Oh, my. Come on. Come on. Okay. We've got. Breathe. <laughs> Nothing's not connected to anything anymore. <laughs> <We're> not... <laughs> no way. <laughs> wow. Oh. oh. <laughs> that is insane, dude. Wow. Nice. Wow. Dang, dude. That is shocking. <laughs> How's it look? Uh, wow. Like your Iron Man. Yeah? Yeah. It's there. Wow. Yeah, that's the other thing. Too. Like, <laughs> it won't save you. <laughs> <laughs> just the next guy, just the next guy that wants to use it. You would have been splattered in there. You know, there's something. It's something. That was great. I'm pretty happy with that, honestly.